Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Rotterdam, a uh, great city. I hope you'll have a very good week here. Um, my name is Marco Bink, team lead genetics and genomics at Hendrix Genetics, and also one of the work package leaders of uh, GeneSwitch. And I'll, today I'll uh, give a flavor about validating the prospects of function annotations in genomic prediction. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to disclose all the results because, well, the project is still ongoing and the main results still have to arrive, as we'll see later. Uh, outline, a bit of short background about genome prediction and overview of the work package, uh, then a breeder's perspective about why do you think that this is important, um, anticipated impact, and a few take-home messages. Well, genomic prediction, the easiest way to explain what genomic prediction is about, what's the, the value is, is that if you have um, a litter of four picks here, one, two, three, four, um, at birth, we cannot really distinguish between these four where, which one has the best uh, breeding value for, uh, to produce later uh, pigs herself. Um, so we can take a, a blood sample uh, or tissue sample, we extract DNA, and we do a, a DNA profile by SNP arrays, and we can put that into a, breeding value, in a prediction model, uh, and we get genomic breeding values, for example, for the trade number of piglets. And then we can see that number two and number four have a positive breeding value, and, and one and two have a negative breeding value. And so based on a blood sample, we can distinguish between those four uh, animals. And that, that's what uh, made genome prediction very attractive for uh, animal breeders, but also plant breeders. Um, and from this, we could select two and four if, it, if the breeding goal is to, to breed for more piglets. Overview of work package four, um, as mentioned at the previous slide, we use genotypes and phenotypes uh, into prediction models for genomic prediction. Within work package four, we're gonna add function annotation maps into this, uh, in these prediction models, so we have to develop new genomic models, and Mario will uh, elaborate a bit more in, in his presentation in, uh, in 20 minutes or in 10 minutes, I think. Um, we could also use fine map QGLs, and we can also uh, use uh, expression QGLs but I'm not gonna zoom into, into too much on that. Today it's more about validation, so we have two levels of validation. One is uh, an experiment where we had 300 pigs um, uh, taking tissue samples for uh, gene expression, but also uh, for a DNA for whole genome sequencing. So we have whole, geno whole genome sequence SNP data on those 300 pigs. On level two, we have a commercial uh, pig and also a commercial uh, poultry uh, population. We are mostly involved in the, uh, in the pig uh, population, so I'll have an example on that. And there's a link between the, three, uh, one, the 100 pigs over here are part of the 100 pigs uh, of the data set over here. I'll, I'll come back to that. Uh, the first thing we did in the, in the project is to develop new models, uh, thinking about, okay, what, what if we can include gene expression, what kind of models do we want, what can we expect? Uh, we went, uh, we started off with a data set from the Jackson lab in mouse. Uh, why this data set? Because it was available. It had a lot of uh, attractive features like uh, gene expression data, a lot of phenotypes, and also uh, a lot of function annotation data is already available for, for mouse. <clears throat> and in this uh, example here, I'm going to focus on body weight. So we have body weight measured on, on three different time points, 10 weeks, 15 weeks, and 20 weeks. And we, we took gene expression, or there's gene expression data from liver at week 26. And that becomes relevant that it's a week 26, as you'll see later. And th these results are uh, written down in a manuscript that we have submitted. Um, it was unfortunately rejected, and, and now we're going to revise it and, and resubmit very soon. About results from that paper, um, if you just use SNPs in your um, genomic prediction approach, these are the, the, the percentages variance explained by the model. So on average, uh, 35 to 40, 42 uh, percent of variation is explained by the SNPs in your model. If we just include gene expression data, then we see that, that it, it goes up quite a bit, uh, and it, it ranges from 68 to 75. We also see here that the, the, the numbers are increasing if we move on uh, in time, so closer to week 26. So uh, we explain more variants than, than SNP genotypes and also phenotypes closer to weeks 26. Uh, we explain more variation on those traits from the gene expression that was taken at uh, week 26. If we combine 
uh, SNPs and, and, and gene expression data, so we condition gene expression on, on the SNPs, then we still see this pattern that, that we explain more variation closer to this uh, time point of, of measuring gene expression. Uh, we also see that, that the, uh, most of the variation is explained by the SNPs because we condition the gene expression on the SNPs so that it's, it, it's a model uh, implication. But we still see this nice pattern. <coughs> And we see that, that by combining gene expression and SNPs, we explain much more variation than just SNPs. The other part, main, main message uh, of this uh, short presentation is about the breeder's perspective on estimated breeding values. Um, so normally what we, we, we used to do is, is a blood breeding value estimation, so you use pedigree and phenotype data. And we've seen that when including genotypes, so uh, in GBLOP or other methods, so using genome prediction, we have an increase of accuracy from uh, plus 10 to 50 percent on average, just as an uh, example. And most times we use commercial or uh, customized uh, SNP arrays, about 50,000 SNPs on these arrays. Um, then the interesting thing is, is what can annotations add to that? Um, and we, we, uh, we considered uh, so-called CAT scores, combined annotation dependent depletion scores that was written, uh, developed, or extended by uh, Gross et al. Um, for um, mouse and, and livestock species, because initially it was developed for a human. Uh, and these scores take all kind of information into account about uh, conservation of the genome, uh, but also function annotation and gene expression. So it's a single score. Um, and so we evaluated what, what's the, if we would add these CAT scores to the 50K array, what, uh, how much more accuracy do we, do we gain? And that, that's actually what's uh, presented over here. Five traits in, in layers. So this is not gene switch data because we didn't have access to gene switch data to do this kind of analysis. In these uh, five traits, you just have to look at the, uh, the arrows at the bottom. So. Adding these CAT scores, it, it increases for uh, breaking strength, uh, it decreases for egg number, increases for hatchability, decreases for egg, uh, egg weight, and increases for survival. So very mixed pattern, not, not really a boost of, of your accuracy. <coughs> so adding these CAT scores, it's, it's, I made it gray because, well, we, we first have to uh, study this in more detail, but the first results, they only show 0 to 5%, so not, not a big gain. Uh, the other thing we could do is, is instead of 50k SNPs uh, using, we could go to whole genome sequence data, so more than 10 million SNPs in our case for, uh, I think, more than 90 million uh, SNPs in, uh, in this data set, that, uh, in the land race, that we're going to use in the uh, gene switch. Uh, genotype imitation is, is, is important. It, it has been uh, studied quite a bit, uh, but and in this... Uh, in gene switch, we also did it, and we looked at the impact of if you start from a 3K, 10K, 50K, 60, 80K, so the size of the SNP array, does it have an impact on the imputation accuracy? Also, we looked at uh, does it matter whether you do a so-called one-step approach, so go from 3K to whole genome se sequence level, or do you uh, include an intermediate step, so-called two-step, and see whether that the accuracy does increase on that. So on the latter, the one step, the two step, you see here the pattern, well, I didn't give numbers, but on uh, the general trend is that, that the two step gives better results than the one step. Also, you see that the 3K and 10K accuracy is, is not as high as you would like to do. Um, and that brings me to uh, the next point is that um, what we've, uh, sorry, I'm not sure if it's, yeah, this one. Um, if you would go, just go use SNP data and you would go from SNP arrays of 50K to uh, whole genome sequence, we did not see many reports where they uh, reported a big increase in uh, prediction accuracy. So zero to 5% is only minor. So for breeders, we don't get very enthusiastic about that yet. So the next step is, is to go from whole genome sequence to and then use CAT scores. And that's uh, still an open question. We still have to, to look into that. Um, but that, that could be more interesting because these CAT scores, they really uh, link to, to SNPs that are mutations that have an impact. And the, the SNPs on the, on the SNP array, they have not been chosen to, to have a high impact uh, a priori. They're the kind of neutral markers and spaced nicely along the genome. <clears throat> yep, 
Um, I'm close to that. Uh, so, so in GeneSwitch, we, we have many annotation maps, like uh, Hervé already uh, showed to you, many tissues, different assays, etc. And then the question is, if you use these individual maps, you can do a lot of analysis and all there. It's still an open question. And, and for a breeder, it's very difficult to do all these analysis and, and then decide which one is, is best. Um, so anticipated impact, I think gene expression results, we show that, that uh, they have added value, but there's a cost with that. Also sampling complexity, when to sample, etc. Um, and I think the added value of annotations, I think there uh, we still have to uh, wait for the uh, results from gene switch. Um, and I'll stop here. Well, I think the main point here is stay tuned for our results for the next half, one and a half years. So thank you. <laughs>